The roots of modern English have their beginnings in the United Kingdom of Britain. British English was concerned with social or economic class. The pronunciation and structure of English used reflected the position of the user in society. This included significant regional variation as well as basic class differences. One example of this is the received pronunciation which originated in the wealthy southern areas of the country which became known as Standard or BBC English, the acceptable broadcasting standard for many years. Northern English was considered to belong to the working classes and included the Geordie and Scouse accents, among others. Whilst this is only one example, it illustrates the importance within the British system of class and how language was an immediate indicator of the position of an individual in society. In more recent times, American English has become closer to being the worldwide standard. American English is more concerned with morality and religion than it is with class. This is related to the founding of the country as a religiously free society, escaping the old world control of the British Empire. The grammatical structure of American English is concerned with persuading the listener to the point of view of the speaker, making use of shorter, simpler and more hard-hitting constructions with less impressive vocabulary. In the same way, spelling is simplified, often dropping double vowels in favour of singular vowels, singular consonants in place of double, and so on. This simplification of spelling follows phonetics, or more exactly, the sounds of the words. Australian English also has some unique characteristics. Australia was first used by the British as a penal colony. Most people sent to Australia were slaves of the British, working up to 14 hours a day, serving sentences of 7 years, 14 years or life. From 1788 until 1868, approximately 162,000 prisoners were sent to Australia. The majority of these were from England, Wales, Ireland and Scotland. These men and women lived and worked in an environment where authority was feared and mistrusted and British soldiers were considered the enemy. Language became a tool of rebellion and this led to the creation of new phrases and the use of words in new ways. This included the invention of new words such as bludger and larrikin. The use of profanity and informality became a key feature of the language. It became possible to use profane words in a number of grammatical classes with both positive and negative meanings. This feature is also seen in other varieties of English, but a key difference in Australian English was the use of humour and the desire of classlessness, which grew out of the rebellion against the British rulers. This was most famously evidenced in the Eureka Rebellion, where the British army attempted to subdue free settlers who had rebelled against harsh laws and taxes. They flew the Southern Cross flag, which has since been known as the Eureka flag. This event is thought by many to be what led to the Electoral Act of 1856, which began democracy in Australia. This mistrust of authority also led to the use of deceptive phrases where the truth is hidden, and some of these phrases are still in use today. These historical events, which led to the mistrust of authority and dislike of class, have created many unique characteristics in Australian English. Like most countries, accent can vary from place to place in Australia. Features of connected speech, slang and speed can make it difficult for non-native speakers to understand some Australian speakers at first. This video is one example of variation in Australia. I've walked out the front and I've seen uh, the car smashed and I've seen the bloke walking back to the car. And so I've walked outside and I said, oh, what are you doing, mate? Like, you can't be leaving the scene. And he goes, don't be a hero, mate. And I said, I'm not trying to be a hero, but the police are coming. And he just decided he'd scoot up the road. And I just said, nah, it's not going on like that, mate. So I jumped in my car and I started chasing him up the road. And then he went down a side street and then the police were coming. And I flashed him and sent them off in the direction of him. Other common features of Australian English include the use of reversals of meaning. For example, naming someone with red hair, Bluey. There are also many thousands of diminutive forms in Australian English, which create an informality related to the previously discussed distrust of authority and dislike of class. Generally, these forms follow the rule of shortening a noun and ending in a vowel sound. This short video from YouTube provides some examples of this particular feature of Australian language. 
Australia. Australia. A football, footy, tennis ball, and a biscuit. Vicky, chocolate, chocky, chocolate, biscuit, chocky, Vicky. McDonald's. Macca's. Laptop. Lappy. <laughs> ACDC. Packa Packa. Devastating. Definitely. Defo. Morning tea. Monos. No one's there. I say that all the time. What time is it? One of Get it, Vicky. Afternoon. Arvo. This afternoon. Savo. Dinner. Din dins. <laughs> Breakfast. Brecky. Service stations. Servo. Petrol. Petty. Bottle shop. Bottle. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> Bowling club. Bowler. Garbage man. Garbo. Postman. Posty. RSL. Ari. Or Bristol. Smoke break. Smoker. Registration. Regio. Aggressive. Agro. You would write a little after smoker, I might go down to the bowl of the side though for a shitty and bit of time. And I head back to the missus for Din Din's and the fan watching Sophie's on the telly. Hoping the way I don't get pulled over by the coppers because I don't have anywhere to go. We're so bogan. While common language may be informal, academic language is formal and generally follows the British spelling rules. It should also be impersonal and restricts the use of abbreviations and diminutives. Generally, when you meet someone for the first time in Australia, it is okay to use their first name without a title. This is true for your class tutor, lecturer or classmate. If you are meeting a person of some authority or in a formal setting, you should use Mr, Miss, Professor, followed by their family name. It is common to shake hands the first time you meet someone, but it is not necessary every time you meet them. You should attempt to participate in turn-taking in conversation, asking follow-up questions and giving everyone in the conversation a chance to respond. If you don't understand something or the speaker is too fast, it is okay to say, could you repeat that? Or, I'm sorry, you're speaking too quickly. Most Australians will be happy to help you understand, but they might not realise at first how fast they are speaking or that you don't understand their slang language. So, don't be afraid to speak up and be heard. You should also note that most Australians feel uncomfortable with formal behaviour, so it is much better to be informal and relaxed if you want to make friends fast.